Welcome, everybody. It is Wednesday, so here's our video for today. Yeah, it's been a while since Janelle's been around, so it's nice to have you back on, on <laughs> camera don't, here. I don't even pay attention. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know how long it's so, been. Today, we're going to talk about friendships, and so we're going to go through the different types of friendships. And then lastly, we're going to heavily lean on St. Teresa of Avila and what it means to have a holy friendship or a virtuous friendship. So you want to lead here? Sure. You know, I'm reading this book right now. It's actually been an interesting little journey for me. It's called Ask Your Husband by Stephanie Gordon. And uh, it's really challenged me in many, many ways. And I know probably some of you who've read this book feel the same way. But anyhow, she does talk about how Aristotle, who is like an ancient Greek philosopher back from like 300 uh, BC, um, touches on these three different types of friendships. One of them is a friendship of utility, a friendship of pleasure, and then a friendship of virtue. So that, some of you are thinking, what is a friendship of utility? Oh, yes. Okay. So a friendship of utility would be like basically someone who's your friend because you need them or because you want to use something that they have. So for example, maybe your neighbor has a pool down the street and you really want to use their pool. So you become their friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, a friendship of, uh, what's the other one? Pleasure. So the example that she gives in her book is basically, you know, like in high school, you have all these friends that you like to do silly, fun things with, but really it's not super deep, but basically a friendship of pleasure. I, you know, I think back to college days, drinking buddies. Uh, would uh, that, that would kind of maybe yeah, that would in. exactly fall into that. Would it also be, what, what about sports buddies? Yeah, that's a friendship of pleasure. Okay. Okay. But I, I think you could probably have a little bit of deafness there. But the, the most superior form of friendship is obviously a friendship of virtue, because that's the friendship that's going to be calling you to a higher good, a higher level of, you know, morality and ultimately help you get to heaven. So Teresa of Avila, St. Teresa of Avila, doctor of the church, speaks about holy friendships in a variety of places in her writing. So we're going to go through a couple of key uh, beautiful quotes that highlight the importance of it, because she says a holy friendship can save your soul. But to get to know God's friends is a very good way of having him. As I have discovered by experience, it is most helpful. For under the Lord, I owe it to such persons that I am not in hell. I was always very fond of asking them to commend me to God. And so I prevailed upon them to do so. St. Teresa of Avila is reminding us that holy friendships can really help in our salvation, in fact, can help us be saved, as in, she thinks, her case. She goes on to write that these friendships are particularly needed when our virtue is weak, mm -hmm. because she says there's many opponents to us uh, that can lead us into vice. And and that's something to, re to remember, that if our friendships are leading us into vice or vice-based, uh, get rid of those relationships. And it's not because we are d those d think those people are terrible people, but for the sake of our own soul and for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more important than working out our salvation. And when we have friendships that hurt our relationship with Jesus Christ, that's a very serious thing. Mm -hmm. And we need to watch out for that. And I think there, there's a stumbling block there because people feel like they don't want to be mean, right? And so they don't, they feel like um, anytime like breaking a relationship or, you know, having certain boundaries and stuff like that, that that is a mean thing to do. But at the same time, we have to remember like what is ultimately going to lead both of us to heaven, you know? And she talks about that. And we, we're not going to quote her, but she talks about having the friendship based upon the end goal. Mm -hmm. And that end goal is heaven. That's really what roots us in a holy friendship, that we want to glorify God and get to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's the common foundation of a holy friendship. And if you look in life, what creates relationships with each other? It's experiences and values. And that's my language, not St. Teresa of Avila, but experiences and values. So holy friendship, what's the value? Everything that Jesus Christ has revealed, the, the divine revelation, his, his law, the experience, what is that that unites that holy friendship? The struggle of trying to pursue Christ, the struggle of prayer, or the joy of prayer, the great consolations, the, the cross of Jesus Christ. These are the experiences that unite holy friendships uh, and th that, are, that are so necessary. I believe that he who discusses these joys and trials for the sake of this friendship with God will benefit himself and those who hear him and he will come away instructed, even without understanding, 
how he will have instructed his friends. So these joys and struggles of faith, St. Teresa is reminding us when we share that with each other, it, it grows this relationship, mm -hmm. this friendship. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of the, these friendships that I have. I've had, um, there's these four women that we've journeyed together for a long time. Uh, we actually went to India together in 2007, and then we tried to get together every single year. You know, we're not all in the same city, and actually one of one of us is actually becoming a religious sister quite soon. So everyone's kind of leading a little bit of different lives, but we're actually getting together this weekend. And I feel like those women, I've been able to, um, you know, discuss and share the joys and trials of faith and, um, you know, the journey of growing in holiness with them. And it's been such a beautiful, I, th I feel just so blessed to have those, those women in my life. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when you are discussing your joys and sorrows in relationship with Christ, your, your relationship with Jesus, when you're listening to the other person's share, they don't even know they're instructing you. And I found this so often with speaking with some of my friends. I, I, I ask them the, a question, like, what are you learning? I love that question. Tell me what you're learning. And sometimes it's just a natural thing, like well, they're learning a new skill, or maybe it's an area of finance, if that's their interest or something about like sports or you know, philosophy. But oftentimes, what are you learning? Well, because the, these are good guys, they're reading spiritual books and then they share with me. Mm -hmm. And I love I love it. So I just had an experience on the phone with somebody and uh, he shared with me a podcast he was listening to. I said, tell me about your the biggest takeaway. So he shared that with me. And he had no idea how edifying it was for me to hear what he was learning. Mm -hmm. And in one way, I felt like I was cheating. Now I didn't have to listen, listen to, to the, the whole po podcast. <laughs> 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 and I got the greatest nugget of truth. Mm -hmm. So such a such a blessing to have those kind of people. But it is. But sometimes you have to push a little bit with with people and ask the question: What are you learning? Mm -hmm. Or what is God doing in your life? I like that one too. Yes. What is God doing in your life? Excellent question. It lays a foundation for a discussion. And the interesting thing is, like, even sometimes, like, you ask that question and people just don't have an answer for it. And that's okay. Because I think we don't often sometimes think, like, what is God doing in my life? But now I can think about that. Because God is always doing something in our lives. And if some of our friends out there are watching this thinking, okay, Ken's going to ask, I will ask that question. But sometimes people don't have an answer. It doesn't mean you're a person's bad. Someone asks that question to me back. Sometimes I don't <laughs> I know. I ask you that question. So what's God doing in your life? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you don't know. And that's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It is a kind of humility not to trust in oneself, but to believe that through those with whom one converses, God will help and increase charity while it is being shared. And there are a thousand graces I would not dare speak of if I did not have powerful experience of the benefit that comes from this sharing. So, so when I'm asking this question, what are you learning or what is the Lord doing in your life or what is God doing in your life? I always believe that the person I'm speaking to is my superior in some way. Like they have something about God to reveal to me that God would use them, that I am not self-sufficient in this matter, that I cannot learn everything there is to know on the spiritual life just through books, that God would use people. And I think that's important to remember uh, that God can use and will use powerfully other people's words and their experiences to increase the charity of God within us. God will use them this way. Can you just sit with me for a minute? Yeah. Can you just sit with mom? Well, we're almost done. I feel so big. What do you feel on your foot? Mm -hmm. Can I see? There we go. How's that? Oh, so we got a friend here with us. Catherine, do you want to say hi? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saint Teresa offers some advice on entering into other people's joys and sorrows and holy friendships. For on one occasion, as much distress may be caused by quite a small matter as would be caused on another by some great trial. And there are people whose nature it is to be very much cast down by small things. If you are not like this, 
do not neglect to have compassion on others. It may be that our Lord wishes to spare us these sufferings and will give us sufferings of other kind, which will seem heavy to us, though to the person already mentioned, they may seem light. Okay. We need to go to bed. Go ahead. I'll, I'll finish up. You're going to come for the... Okay, you come for the drive with me. And there's still Pascal. Pascal needs to eat. Okay. Anyhow, when you're done, if you could come upstairs. Sure. St. Teresa of Avila gives some really great advice on how to be a good friend to somebody. So she says, you know, when somebody's sharing something with you and you perceive it to be very trivial and you can't understand how come they're struggling with that thing and perhaps it even annoys you that they're struggling with such a simple little thing. It seems like a big deal to them and such a little thing to you. She goes on to write, it's important not to judge the other person by your own standard. So we don't project upon that person <laughs> our own strengths. And then she goes on to say that, you know, sometimes the reason that we're not struggling with that thing that they are is because God has given us the grace not to. And in fact, we've never had to struggle with that thing that the other person is struggling with. We've never had to war with it. And we haven't acquired that virtue because of a great struggle. It's just out of God's choosing that he's given it to us naturally. And so God has been extremely gracious to us. And so we should be gracious to that other person who maybe hasn't naturally been given that virtue. Now they have to struggle for it. The other thing is that Maybe we see somebody that has is struggling with something that we used to struggle with, but now we don't. And we look at, well, pick it up, right? Can't you work through it? Can't you, you know, rise to the occasion like I did? We have to remember that the only reason that we overcame the struggle that our friend is sharing with us is because God was good to us. <laughs> that it wasn't by ourselves that we overcame the struggle that they are going through. It was because of His grace. And so we have to exercise great patience with those who share their struggles with us and understand that the only reason that we don't struggle with the same thing that they're going through is by the grace of God, simply because God has been good to us. Some great additional advice St. Teresa offers is that when we are tempted to be hard or impatient with somebody else's weakness and they're sharing with us, Remember, she says, remember yourself at your weakest. What are you like at your weakest? You know, maybe they're at their weakest right now and they're sharing something with you. You know, we might not struggle with the same thing, but we do struggle with something else. So remember, what are you like at that weakest moment? And let that knowledge help you be compassionate and patient and giving that tender listening here to that ear to that person. And isn't it a great blessing when you can have a friend who enters into that struggle with you and, and feels that pain with you? And on the flip side, when a friend shares with you a great joy in the Lord that you can enter into that joy, that's what you can do. So pay attention. When someone is sharing with you, enter into those highs and those lows with that person with great charity. And that's some great qualities of a Christ-like friend. I gotta go, Janelle's waiting for me upstairs, so please comment below, share with me what stood out to you and why I would love to learn from you, my friends. And we'll see you soon. God bless you.